Hi, I'm Jesse Holstein of New Bedford Symphony. And uh, yes, I'm a little hairy right now. Uh, just sort of letting it go a bit. Um, so thank you for joining us tonight, or joining me tonight, uh, as part of the New Bedford Symphony. And uh, so welcome to this evening's live stream performance. We'd like to thank our evening's concert sponsors, AHA New Bedford, and Robert B. Feingold and Associates. Um, I wanted to say, uh, often when we read the um, sponsors, uh, you know, it's, we're so appreciative, but um, I've ha I happen to have gotten to know Bob and Jan Feingold uh, quite well and played at their home many times, and uh, I can't thank them enough for everything they've done for the symphony and for the support they've offered me, too. So a huge shout out uh, to Bob and Jan. Um, so please do not turn off your electronic devices. Feel free to type comments. Text your friends, chat with anyone watching with you. You won't disturb me. So thank you for joining us and enjoy. <clears throat> so I chose the title, possibly in bad taste, from the penthouse to the outhouse uh, for this Bach partita because it goes from the courtly French dances to the very rustic dances within the same partita. Um, so there is a prelude to begin this set of dances, and a partita by Bach is always a set of dances, but this is somewhat different, and there's a prelude, which is a bit of an athletic event. And it goes from the high court to the country, and certainly Bach uh, straddled both wor worlds. Uh, he was born the child of a musician, he was an orphan by age 10, um, sang in a boys' choir, uh, then started working in churches and in courts. So he knew both sides of the spectrum, and so he had access to both of these dances. Um, and I will be doing a deeper dive into this piece uh, for a future event. Uh, I know tonight it's brief. But uh, for the AHA, but uh, on May 27th at 7 p.m., I will be doing a slightly deeper dive of this partita um, in E major by Bach. And so uh, I will play it now uh, and tell you the dance before each movement. And there will be some time at the end. I'd be happy to answer any questions or uh, share some things about what I've been up to and besides growing my beard out. Um, so here is the prelude first.
The next movement is a lure, and I had never heard of a lure before playing this piece, but it is a very courtly French dance, actually related to the jig, which will show up later. And one of the really cool things about this um, uh, period is I've actually reconnected with some of my violin teachers, and I've been taking lessons, uh, particularly with my teacher from graduate school, James Buswell, who has been just an incredible mentor. And yesterday I played for my teacher from Oberlin, a wonderful teacher and mentor named uh, Marilyn McDonald. And she pointed out that with the lure, in fact, it changed the way I thought of the piece even since yesterday. With the lure, there's a little leap, da dum da ba bum di da bum bum ba. I always thought it was a leap, ba bum ba ba bum ba, and another leap. So it's not that people would dance to this, but it at least the dance informs how I play it. Um, and this is even since yesterday. I've change the way I play the lure. So here is the lure for you. a gavotte and rondo, also a French dance, and a little bit more rustic, so maybe not in the 
court and not in the country, but in the little courtyard, perhaps. Uh, and what makes this dance inter interesting is there's a little pickup. Yum, bum, ba, da, 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 da. And again, I'm not going to dance as I play, but the dance informed the way I thought of it. The next two movements are bridged together. Uh, they are two minuets, and also this was uh, changed since yesterday um, when I played for uh, Marilyn McDonald, who is a Baroque specialist as well. And she pointed out with the minuet that the foot doesn't go down on the second bar. Now, what I mean by that is instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And she also pointed out that the second minuet is often called a musette. And I never knew that. And the musette was an instrument, sort of like a squeeze box. And uh, so that, that clarified a lot of things. And so I'd like to play the two minuets now.
any live performance, sometimes you have to do what you need to do. And there was some Holstein in that Bach. Um, I'm going to play the last two dances as a set. And now we are out of the court, even out of the courtyard, and into the country for a bourree. And uh, I didn't realize, also thanks to my teacher, uh, James Buswell, that the bourree is also called a hornpipe. So that also changed the way that I played this. And then, thanks to Mrs. McDonald, yesterday she mentioned the bourree should be faster than the jig. So that also changed things. So it's, uh, I think that's been incredibly satisfying to go a little deeper with this piece. Um, and, uh, you know, even since yesterday, it's changed pretty dramatically. And I'm looking forward to diving even deeper before uh, the 27th. So here is the bourre and the jig, which I will play uh, back to back. the E major partita. Ah, we're going to skip the Q&A, but uh, I guess there's a little bit of a technical problem with the stream, with the feed. I'll just let people know a um, couple things that I've been up to. I've been teaching a lot uh, for Community Music Works 
for Brown University and privately. Uh, Community Music Works is one of the other hats that I wear. Um, it's a program in Providence uh, that I've worked for for 19 years now. Um, I have been running a lot. Uh, that is something that I do to cope, um, not just for physical health, but for mental health too. And um, it was very challenging when I closed the parks. I was running on a road back and forth. In fact, I ran a half marathon in a parking lot a few weeks ago, and that was pretty boring. But um, I've been cooking a lot with my wife, Aline, who is also a member of the symphony, and we played a concert together a few weeks ago. I've uh, been able to sit more um, in mindfulness uh, meditation. I'm trying to infuse that in my playing, um, basically just to get out of the way of myself. Um, I tend to get quite nervous, as I did tonight, and but the more I can get out of the way and let the music take over, uh, I find the easier it is because I'm not focused on me, which is not really what I want to be focused on anyways. Um, uh, my wife has been gardening up a storm in our backyard, and um, it looks amazing. Uh, we've been watching some shows. We went through this show called uh, Endeavor, which is related to Inspector Morse. Um, and uh, we've just started a show, uh, an Icelandic show called Trapped. Um, so that's kind of fun. And the cat loves it when we watch stuff because the cat is just right there. In fact, if the cat, if I was playing in another room, the cat would be here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think for the summer, I am going to be um, c continuing to learn and relearn unaccompanied repertoire. I'm going to play a lot of duet music with my wife um, and just try to have projects that um, to keep myself busy and to sort of broaden my perspective and uh, yeah. Uh, but feel free to um, send me any questions either to the New Bedford Symphony website, you can just email them. Um, or I'm just Jesse, uh, or I should say J Holstein, J H O L S T E I N, at communitymusicworks.org. I'd be happy to answer any questions, uh, feedback, comments. And I wanted to, a uh, huge thank you to the New Bedford Symphony staff. It is a small but mighty staff, and I can't thank them enough for making these opportunities available to the musicians. I feel really taken care of by, uh, by the staff and supported, and they're, they're really amazing, and one of the things that makes the symphony so great. Um, again, a huge thanks to Bob uh, and Jan Feingold, uh, dear friends, who have an amazing garden, by the way, uh, if you have never seen it. And uh, I'd like to also say that on Saturday, there is going to be another streaming concert. Uh, Ciara Jaffe, Flute, and Erica Driscoll, Harp, will be doing a program together at 7 p.m. this Saturday, May 16th, which you can get on, I think, the Facebook Live and also through the New Bedford Symphony website. Uh, speaking of the website, uh, to stay aware of what's going on in the symphony and any updates to this constantly changing situation, uh, you can visit and sign up for the newsletter. Uh, it's, it's just, uh, if you just type in New Bedford Symphony, uh, mbsymphony.org, I believe. Sorry, I should have written this down. Sorry, Connie. Uh, but you can sign up and um, stay aware of what we're doing, other concerts and events. Um, and uh, yes, and just a huge thank you to everybody for tuning in and uh, welcome to my little practice hut. And uh, hope to see you again soon. And I will be doing a deeper dive into this Bach on May 27th at 7 p.m. So, good night.